So the theme today, there's a lot of things I talk about, investments, real estate trends, population shifts, economy. But the real theme today is a global race for leadership. That's what we're seeing and we'll see intensify in the next decade. And it is a global economy now. That's, that's one of the shifts we're seeing today. The leaders here or anywhere that dominate key technologies or products end up being global leaders and have six billion plus consumers, not just a couple hundred million in the U.S. or a billion in the developed world or whatever. most important trend we're going to talk about today in the next decade, we call the Roaring 2000s in comparison to the Roaring 20s, we're going to establish the leaders in all types of new products, technologies, and industries here and around the world 10 years from now. Nothing will be more important than where your business is 10 years from now, and it doesn't matter if you're not the leader today. It's great. One of the most important things to understand if you look at history is about every other generation we get a radical shift, new technologies emerge, and about four decades later radical new business models emerge like the assembly line that followed cars. And it changes business, it creates whole new industries and whole new leaders. Most of the leading mass market corporations of today we're still growing around the world, billions of new consumers, were established in the late Roaring Twenties, early Thirties. And they've been the leaders ever since. Predictability. Everybody says the world's changing so fast we can predict less and less. And the opposite is true because of new information. We can predict things nobody would have ever thought you could predict decades in advance about business trends, product trends, technologies, even these revolutions, everything we'll talk about today. That has a huge impact on business strategy and on personal investments. What if you could see all the key trends over the next four, five, six decades that would affect your business and your investments? Wouldn't that make a difference in your life and strategic planning? We can do that. Principle number two is globalization. That is the big, one of the big shifts since the 50s and 60s boom. We're in a global market. It started with agricultural and industrial commodity products. The Internet's going to shift it to services and everything else, ultimately. It's not re-engineering. It's what I call an actual network organization. And the key to understanding that we'll get into is it's the opposite principle of every management principle in the last 500 years and certainly the last century, the assembly line. Companies, as well as networks of companies, should organize around the customer and operate bottoms up, not top down. Management is the problem in business today. We're not adding capacity and infrastructures and starting new businesses. We're shedding businesses that didn't win the race for leadership. We're shedding employment and facilities and paring down to the few efficient leaders like General Motors and Ford. They're going to lead an industry for the rest of the cycle. Deflationary shakeout like the Depression. That lasts about 12 to 14 years. And then the next boom by the next generation who incrementally innovates instead of radically like the Bob Hope. Korea has the strongest demographics, not only in the next decade, but strong demographics of spending into 2020. Korea was down 80% in 1998. And we said that's the number one place to buy. Down 80% with the strongest demographics. We said the markets were wrong. The rest of Asia was not going to go like Japan. Japan's down for demographic reasons. The rest of Asia is going to come back so fast you won't believe it. And it's still happening. And it will continue. The internet is to the new economy what the assembly line was to the old. It's a whole new way of doing business. It's not just a way to talk to friends. It's not just a way to automate parts of your business. It's a whole new way to do business. That's how you're going to win the race for leadership, understanding this new business model. And that's the biggest advantage a smaller company has versus a larger competitor who's going to tend to be a lot slower to adopt something new.